Hello friends, trying to cope with depression by playing Mahjong on a video game here, bringing you another Star Rail video, in which I'm going to tell you on how to play Dan Hung, with this complete Dan Hung guide. Dan Hung is a 4 star win Han unit that deals massive single target damage, he can also slow enemy down with his skill. After watching this video, you can go from looking like this, to this. Alright, with that being said, let's get into it. Starting with his stats, he has the second lowest base HP in the game, which is 882. He has the sixth lowest base attack in the game, which is 546. He has the fifth lowest base defense in the game, which is 396. And he has the third highest speed in the game, which is 110. His stone value is 75 because he's a Han character. Now let's start with this basic attack. It is just your standard basic attack with two valid hits. Nothing special here. And now we have his skill, dealing wind damage to a single enemy with 4 valid hits. This is very good since you can stack sword play damage bonus very easily. It also has a 100% base chance to reduce the enemy's speed by 12%. This is especially great for healing enemy action. And by the way, for those who don't know what valid hit is, it's like how many hits the character does when they use their basic attack, skill or ultimate. You can see here on the screen that Tan Hung has 4 valid hits by looking at how many numbers pop up. Next we have Tan Hung's ultimate, deal massive wind damage to a single enemy. Alright, I cannot stress this enough. You don't want to use his ultimate before the enemy is slowed, because the amount of damage you will lose will be insane. I know you will think something like, oh but sir, I need to use his ultimate so that I can fill his energy bar faster. No no no, st stop doing that. That's very wrong. You either want to use his ultimate after you use his skill, or just save it until the enemy is slowed down. Unless in a certain scenario like the enemy will die after you use your ult. Moving on, we have his talent. So how does this work? We just need to cast a skill to Dan Heng. Well, that's all about it. It can be an AoE skill like Natasha ultimate or Bailu ultimate. You don't need to cast it directly. After that, you can get the win rest penetration buff. Note that this buff cannot be snapshot. By that I mean like, after you cast his skill and then directly cast ultimate, you cannot have the win rest penetration on his ultimate. I will explain about snapshots and other things in the future videos. Lastly, his technique is pretty simple. It's just an attack buff for 3 turns after you enter the battle. So the basic info is done about him. Let's talk about his traces and his traces priority. The first major trace is Hidden Dragon, it is unlocked after Ascension 2. Whenever Dan Hang is below 50% HP, he gets targeted less. But being targeted less doesn't mean that he won't be attacked at all. AoE attack can still hit him. Now for his next major trace is Faster Than Like, it is unlocked after Ascension 4. After launching an attack, there is a 50% fixed chance to increase his own speed by 20% for 2 turns. Note that it said fixed chance, meaning that it won't be reduced by the enemy effect resistance or increased by the character's effect hit rate. This trace is just a pretty good part of his kit. His last major trace is High Kill. Basic attack deals 40% more damage to slowed enemies. We can see the pattern here. Dan Hang Kid is about manipulating enemy speed while increasing his own speed. He deals more damage attacking slowed enemies, so this synergizes very well with characters that can slow the enemy down. For Tracer's priority, you want to level his ultimate first, then his skill, after that you want to level his talent, and lastly, his basic attack. Make sure that you level all of his minor traces, and don't just leave it. By minor traces I mean likes, that all this win damage attack bonus stuff, because they will directly improve your damage. For his like on option, I'm going to rank this from best to worst. The best you can use is in the Nike or Sealist signature Nikon. It gives you a nice amount of crit rate. And for every 10 speed you have above 100, you get bonus damage on your skill and basic attack, as well as crit damage for your ult. It also has a very high base stat compared to other Nikon, but of course, because it's a limited 5 star Nikon. Next, we have Sleep Like the Dead. You can get this from the Sub Exchange or Standard Banner. It has a high base stat, it increases your crit damage, and when you didn't crit on your basic attack or skill, your crit rate for your basic attack and skill will be increased for a turn by a huge amount. 
This is great because you need to create on the unhung skill in order to proc the slow to the enemies. Our third best option is wordplay. It has a decent stat, as well as a very good effect. I have said this earlier, that his skill can easily stack wordplay damage bonuses. Because how it works, it's not each time you attack the enemy, but it's valid you does. Even on Simpur Impost 1, it is still better than the next Lycon. And our next Lycon will be cruising in the Stellar Sea, or you can just call it Boat. You can get this Lycon from the Hertha Shop, and easily Simpur Impost 5 this. It has a bit more space stat than Swordplay, and it also has really great effect. You get 16 crit rate and another 16 when their HP is lower than 50%. But in order to maximize the full potential of this Lycon, you need to defeat an enemy first to get the 40% attack buff. Overall, I think this is a solid icon for free to play. Our life's option are only Silent Remain and River Blow In. Both of them are the least icon you want to use on him. Because even the free auto play option from the Hertha shop is better than them. There is also subscribe for more, but I still haven't done enough research if it's worth to play him without his ultimate, just to maximize his basic attack and skill damage. I will make another video regarding this when I actually have the Lycon. Now let's talk about his relic. For relics, his best option is a 4-piece Eagle of Twilight, because you get wind damage and more turn overall. Every time you cast his ultimate, you will get advanced by 100%. This is very great especially if you use using Yun with him, because you can help him generate energy even faster. For other option, you can use 2-piece Musketer and 2-piece Twilight. It's great because it's just more damage overall for your Dunhang. If you're not farming for relic sets, you can use a 4-piece musketeer set. It's also a viable option. And for the ornaments, generally speaking, the space ceiling station is the best for your DPS characters. It increases your attack by 24% when you have equal or more than 120 speed, which you will always have to do your A4 major trace. Other than that, Inner Salsoto will be a decent choice for him, because it increases his crit rate. Crits are always welcome, and you need to crit so that his skill can debuff enemy with slow. The other set effect is not that great because it only buffs his ultimate. So I recommend you to just use space ceiling station. For relics and ornament mindset, you always want either crit rate or crit damage on the chest, attack percent on the feet, wind damage on the spear, and attack percent on the rope. Even if you're using silly Lycon, you don't want him to use speed boots, because he already has a 20% speed buff on his kit. You can use attack percent spear if you don't have a wind damage yet, or you can always craft it with the one you get from the battle pass, or museum event that is currently still ongoing. For his substat, you want to prioritize crit rate or crit damage, attack percent, speed, and then some effect hit rate. Now you might be wondering, why did I mention effect hit rate? It's because his skill has a 100% chance to slow down the enemies. By having a 100% base chance, that doesn't mean that it will always land because base chance is affected by the enemy resistance and the character's effect hit rate. So you want around 20 or 30% effect hit rate on him. If you don't have another unit to slow enemy down like Weld or Civil War. But if your piece has like crit or attack percent or speed, you'd want to prioritize those 3 upper effect hit rate. Now for Eidolon. His best Eidolon is E4, which just giving him extra turn when you kill an enemy with his ultimate. It is just like Silly's Resurgent, but without any buff, just an extra turn. For E1, it's a bit contradicting with Cruising in the Stellar Sea, which need enemy to be below 50% HP to get the crit bonus. For E2, it is just more damage, but make sure to manage your skill point, and don't just keep healing him when he's full HP, just for the win rest penetration. For E3 and E5, more damage overall. It increases your basic attack, skill, ultimate, and talent level. And for is it it makes Dunhang slow enemies even more, but not that. If the skill doesn't land, it's useless. So that's why you want to build some effect hit rate on him, from substat. For team count option, you obviously want one shielder or one healer. You should put Dunhang on the most right or left side so that he won't get attacked by AO attack by enemy. For healer or shielder option, you can use Natasha. Bailu, Jeopard, Fire Trail Baser, and maybe Locha. After that, you want an SP positive support like Ding Yun or Bella. Then the other slot is just a flex option. You can run anything like Weld or Silver Wolf or character that helps with breaking enemy weakness bar. An example of a good team is Dunhang on the left's most position, and then Ding Yun. After that, Natasha. Lastly, Fire Trail Baser on the right most position. You can replace Ding Yun with Asta or other support such as Bella. 
for a hyper carry downhang team, you can use downhang on the leftmost position. Ronya or Asta on the next one, and then Ting Yun and Bai Lu on the rightmost position. This team is really incredible because Bai Lu can easily solo sustain all of the units. Make sure that you level them and their like one so that they won't die. Running something like Jeopard, Pella, Bronya, Dan Heng would work because Jeopard and Pella will be SP positive. So that Dan Heng and Bronya can spawn his skills. Now if you guys still don't understand what SP positive or skill point positive mean, it means that the character can get away easily without using their skill. Jeopard usually will never use his skill because it will be considered a DPS loss. And Bella can get her ult in just 2 basic attack with before the tutorial, Lycon, and level 15 energy recharge drop. For Dan Heng, you can either be SP negative or SP neutral. You can cycle between basic and skill if you're out of SP, or just spam his skill if you're surplus on XP. Just make sure you manage your SP properly and don't just waste it. Bronya can do a basic attack and then cast her skill so that she can be an SP neutral unit. You don't want to pair Dan Heng with Clara, even though she's an SP positive character. Dan Heng slows enemy down, making Clara gets attacked less, which means even less damage. You want to pair Dan Heng with a unit that has a slow debuff like Silver Wolf or Weld. Example team could be Dan Heng, Silver Wolf, Natasha, Red Railblazer. Here, they are very SP hungry. So don't just pump all of their skill. You can use basic attack first, and then follow it up with skill the next turn. Example rotation will be silver wall skill, downhang basic attack, Natasha basic attack, fire trail baser down, silver wall basic attack, and then downhang skill. You guys can adjust it accordingly. Alright, that will be all for this video. If you have any more question or need a quote on Memory of Chaos, you can just ask me through Discord or email me. Sing to f2p at gmail.com and I will be answering all your questions. Please don't forget to subscribe because I'm working 9 to 5 with two side jobs and I'm still using my 2010 laptop that I received from my ex-girlfriend's grandma. Additionally, one of my friend's uncle has double cancer and I want to help him as well. Subscribing will eventually reduce my burden and provide assistance. That's all. Peace.